is watching my dad drool uh, and become speechless when I introduced him to Lena Horn. Because I was working with Lena Horn. <laughs> my dad's a preacher. Preachers are never speechless. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, one of the things that I remember was, about her was her graciousness to people at every level. Everybody in the Amundsen Theater, she knew every person from the guard to the carpenters that worked on the sets, she knew everybody's name. Think about that. Everybody in the building, she could call them by first name and spoke to them. I'll never forget how gracious she was. Everybody in the cast, everybody in the orchestra, everybody, she knew everybody's name. A year later, I'm at Caesars with Diana Ross, and she's at the Sands. I have a night off. So I call up the guys and go, hey man, I'm gonna come over to y'all's show. I go and I see, I go to the show and over the mic, she says, I see you, baby. Come on backstage and say hello to me. Still remembers my name. A year later, that's how gracious. I don't, I'm like, if I could be that open and gracious and that, that nice, that's something to try and, 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 and live up to. For her to be that conscious of every human being that she came in contact with. Uh, amazing. That's one of my most uh, memorable experiences. Another one was we were in uh, doing a South American tour with Billy Preston and we're in Uruguay and we had just played just a, a basketball stadium and it was full from the stage into the rafters it was full and uh, we so we finished the set billy jumps off of the uh, stage runs and gets into a car and I have to say, the promoter was the coolest guy I had t t met to date. So, you know, the chance, you know, they, you know, the natural course was people wanted more. They wanted an encore. And so we're sitting in the, in the back and we see the promoter come in now. He's, he's, he's from, Ar he's from Argentina, right? And uh, he's a big shot in Argentina. When he comes in, and this guy is like, you know, I mean, Brooks Brothers suit, you know, Armani. I mean, he, you know, dressed up. And he comes back there, man. His hair is a mess. He's falling down. His his his, his clothes are torn. <laughs> he looks at us and he goes, "Can you guys go back on stage and play?" They're threatening to burn down the stage with all the instruments on. <laughs> and we all kind of sit back and say, we can't go out there. We're not going out there. And he kept, he kept tell, telling the crowd that Billy would be back, that he had just gone to the hotel. Well, it was a 20 minute ride. These people waited 40 minutes for us to get back on stage. And so when Billy came back out, Finally he reached and, and, and we went on stage and I tell you, I don't remember how I got on stage. If you can understand what it feels like to be caught up 
and the emotions of 8,000 people is just an experience you'll never forget. And when we, I, I think I took two steps. When I remember, I remember walking down at least 12 steps to get to the stage, but how we got on the stage and then how the crowd reacted to us being there, it was pandemonium. I had never experienced that. And I remember not being able to sleep after the show. It was just like, that was great. Oh my God, that was wonderful. Oh my God, that was phenomenal. And it was, that was the first time I had experienced that. But, you know, for Billy it was all that. He's, oh yeah. I'm like, what? But I guess if you were, you know, you're a Beatle, I guess you saw it all the time. But for me, that was my, that was my first real, I mean, moment of what being a rock star was really all about. Because it was pandemonium. Pandemonium. I'm serious. 